Have you heard the phrase, and now for something different? We're going to have something a little different. Well, kind of. So I'm looking through newspapers.com, and I find some very interesting articles about Thomas John. I guess I should show you the articles really quick. Um, I can put the links in and you can read them later. But I found him doing a prediction about the Oscars of 2015. So he does this prediction about what the actresses are going to wear for a newspaper. I have the article. I will show you. I will put a link into underneath the description of this video. And then we could go and look and see what the actresses wore. Hey, why not? <laughs> I don't know a lot about the Oscars or these actresses, but he obviously has a lot of information about the actresses, who they are, and he knows about the designers of the clothing. And I, I have no, no clue, but um, I thought that'd be kind of fun. So let's do that. Let me just make sure I have these in numerical order here, which came first. There's that one. And there is, oh my gosh, you know what? There is like four of these articles that made it to the newspaper of different newspapers. Okay, this is 2016. That's 2016. This one is the one I want to show you. And, oh, maybe there's only two other than this prediction to show you. I, I guess I could do it really quick. All right, this is 2009. And the video I did uploaded just earlier today, which you should be able to find on my YouTube channel under the playlist of Thomas John. And it says, I think it's early Thomas John. I can't remember what I called it, but the PR world. So... Let me screen share this because I think this is the first one. Here's an article. And like I said, I can put this link into the, oops, make sure to the right place. Make sure I've shared it to the right place. Yeah, yeah, here it is. Okay. I guess I did that right. Sorry, everybody. So I can enlarge this. Now, you can't really read this very well, so I'll make it bigger. This is the Chicago Tribune, July 9th, 2009, page tab seven. So what it says, let me see if I can make this a little bigger. Um, it talks about, he's 25 years old. He's being held in the Cook County Jail on a $10,000 bond, allegedly for felony theft by deception or internet fraud and theft. Okay. And then it gives a little more information and verifying the results. Who did it? Uh, uh, who's investigating the case. Other possible counts against him are pending. If anybody has any information about the case or feels they are a victim of fraud, call this phone number. It says he moved to Chicago in 2007. He's best known as a drag persona, Lady Vera Parker. Um, on this website, 800notes.com, I suggest you check out this, this site. I have done a video that went through the comments on this 800notes.com. It is eye-opening about, oh my gosh, what was going on at this time. They have, it was, well, it's 2007, 2008. What they did have back in those days is they had, um, they made, you know, we didn't have social media. So what we did is we had internet, like forums and websites and stuff. And people could go, if they had a phone number of somebody who they felt was scamming them, you could go to this 800 notes.com and you could i guess enter the phone number or you could search for the phone number that you had that was associated with you getting scammed and you could make a a comment so it's really awful there i've done a video but um we're talking about something else right now so let's let's go back to what i was showing you all right um as i said i'll put this in the in the description so you can look at this yourself okay this is where individuals discuss phone numbers linked to possible scams several people have posted complaints about flanagan the past several months claiming that they were alleged victims of fraudulent craigslist postings regarding sublet rental properties in various states from alaska to new york 
local drag personality Terry Yaki, who appeared on Feast of Fun podcast, described him or described Flanagan as a con artist. Uh, they said he's allegedly stolen from her as well, according to Terry. The Queen's downfall became began several weeks back after a Southern drag competition. Flanagan allegedly stranded Chicago backup dancers and a choreographer in Kentucky after a drag pageant and returned to Chicago in a U-Haul that he allegedly never returned. Flanagan was later pulled over by the police who discovered warrants out for his arrest. I want to make sure you notice that last sentence. Warrants out for his arrest. The police found, pulled him over and saw that there were warrants, multiple warrants out for his arrest. Okay. So that's the first article that was back in 2009, this article, July 9th, Chicago Tribune. I will give you the link to that. And then there's two others. I will give you the links to these. Let me just make sure which one's first. Okay, this one is, this is 2015. This one is called... Oh, who is this? Mineshaft. Um, Ex-scammer psychic says he's a new man. Another night with Lady Vera Parker and friends. October, no, November 5th, 2008. Okay, well, this article is written 2015, New York, New York Daily News. Um, and you can see this is the larger paper that it came from. And here's the clip. I'm not going to go over this in detail because I want to get to the Oscars. It's kind of reiterating the same kind of thing. Go to the 800notes.com website, which exists. I, I just looked at it and people are talking about it. Thomas John says that he was never a con man. I did for a fleeting moment think it was an easy way to make money, but I never followed through with that. Okay. I did think it was a way to make money, but I never followed through with that. There was there were never more victims. It wasn't some sort of elaborate, big elaborate thing, he says down here. Um, he credits his brush with the law for helping him harness an ability to reach out to those in the afterlife. I would never really had them honed in enough, he says. Okay, now he says this all the time, that it was only a few hundred dollars. Um, not according to the website, and not according to all the different people who are, or who are talking about what happened to him, and I believe just from the the um, I don't know if you can face a felon felony charge for a few hundred dollars. Now I'm no expert. I don't know because I've never been in trouble. So and I don't in, expect to be in trouble. And this last article, this one is another one. From I think it's from the Daily News. Yeah, here it is. And they talk about, this is 2016. The other one was 2015. Uh, Psychic Drag Queen gave Image Fixer the slip. Okay, I talked about this before. What this is about is he hired a PR company to clean up his image to be a psychic. And the it was, he didn't pay them. So the XTPR um, XTPR, it's a PR company, had to sue him. To uh, to um, had to sue him to get their money. It's three thousand dollars, and it said that they they completed this part right here. I wonder if I can blow that up, make it bigger. Oh yes, I can. I'll give you the link to this too. But let's see what it says here. Maybe I can go even bigger. Okay, the XTPR completed all the services of helping him build and exaggerate in the press his public profile as a believable psychic medium, according to court papers. Court papers say that. So um, I'd really like to get a hold of these court papers. If somebody can help me with that, I'd appreciate that. But they're, according to the court papers, which is what ZTPR said, they helped him build and exaggerate in the press his public profile as a believable psychic medium. Boom. All right. All right. So I will give you those links so that you can look at those and enjoy on your own. Okay. But here's really where we're at. 
this one. Oh my goodness. Wow. It's not often you get to get a newspaper clipping with a psychic giving um, predictions about something that we could actually look up. That's that's unusual. All right, so let me let you see this article. And again, I will give you the link to this so you can read it in depth. All right, this is the Windsor Star. Windsor Star, it's in Ontario, Canada. So, oh, it's from 2015, February 21st. This is Saturday. And I'm not exactly sure what this woman's doing here. Okay, Jennifer Lawrence falls on on stage on the 85th Annual Academy Awards in 2013. Psychic medium to the stars, Thomas John, had predicted she would fall that year. Many celebrities have sought his services. Okay, well, I'd like to see, did he predict it? I, other than him saying he predicted it? I don't know. All right. So I will give you the link to this. I want to get right to the... Um, I want to get right to the prediction. So this is written by somebody named Celia Walden, London Daily Telegraph. And Thomas John says he has a six-month waiting list. He says, we don't know. Can we see that list? Oh, I'm always suspicious of anybody who says they have a waiting list. All right. All right. His it has a reputation. And I want to ask John to protect predict whether or not they should bother pending an acceptance speech. A lot of these people are looking for answers. Seeing me helps them much more than any therapist could. <clears throat> All right. So I, he waived his usual $200 an hour fee and allowed me to leapfrog his six month waiting list to get the lowdown at which female nominees bizarre outfit will be given a big red cross by the fashion critics and whether there's even the smallest chance that Jennifer Lawrence will make it through the night without a tumble and which film will be crowned best picture. All right. So this is where we're going to concentrate on. We're going to concentrate on these predictions here. Who will wear what to the award ceremony? All right. So I'm going to go back and forth so that we can, we can, we can look at this in real time. All right. Meryl Streep going in an Oscar de la Renta and Kira Knightley in Chanel and it definitely a better dress than what she wore to the Golden Globes. Emma Stone in a gorgeous light blue gown and Lupita, I don't know how to say that last name, I've never seen it before, is being one of the best dressed female presenters of the night. So let's start here. Okay, so we're going to look at Meryl Streep. And she's supposed to be wearing an Oscar de la Renta. I'm writing it down just so it'll be easier than having to go back and forth. Kira, I don't know who this is. Nightly. I guess I spend almost no time um, in any kind of celebrity world and watching movies. And Chanel. And definitely a better dress than the one better dress. Well, you know, better. What does that mean? mean? Than the Golden Golden Globes one. Okay. And Emma Stone. I know who that is. I know who Meryl Streep is. And a gorgeous light blue gown. And... This person named Lupita, N-Y-O-N-G apostrophe O, she's going to be one of the best dressed, best dressed, oh, female presenters. Okay, so that might be a, a hitch because that means she's presenting. So we don't, I think that some people who present wear different um outfits than when they're sitting in the audience or when they're performing i don't know don't they change clothes a bunch of times i'm not really sure and i know they do best dressed but i don't know do they do best dressed of the presenters i i don't know let's look at the ones we can look at all right so let's take a take a glance at that so the new york times has this article and I do have a subscription to the New York Times, so I can 
look at this easily. And this is all red carpet watch. And it is from, well, where is the date on this darn thing? Well, when I looked it up, it was 2015. So we will find it in a minute. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll look. All right. Oh, that's, oh, sorry, lady. Okay, let's start with Merrill Street. So let's try looking for Merrill Street. Merrill. Nothing. Spell it right. M E R Y L. Yeah, nothing for Merrill Street. Hmm. Oh, this is just Rosamund Pike. That's why it's only her. Okay, here it is. I knew I'd seen this earlier. Don't look, guys. Don't get cheating. Okay, let's go back. Oscars 2015. Ta da! Okay. <laughs> Gee, Gerbic, you can do this. So it has all these people's outfits, right? Okay. Julia Moore. All right. So let's start with Meryl. Meryl Street. There she is. She's in London. What's London? It's, I guess it's a, one of these people. Okay. So here is Meryl Street in 2015, June 17th, 2015. And she is not wearing Oscar de la Renta. She's wearing Landon, whatever that is. All right. So no. Oh, those gloves are awful. Okay, so here, let's look at the next one up. P-E-I-R-A. Kira. Here's Kira Knightley. She received her first Oscar for Pride and Prejudice. Oh, that's that's nice. I wonder what that says on there. And here is where she was wearing on another night. Oh, Producers Guild of America Awards on January 24th. So what she wore before. That's odd looking. And here she is, um, I guess, with another. Okay. All right. Oh, the Critics' Choice Awards. So they're showing several different outfits this people wore. Okay, what did she wear to the Oscars? She wore Valentino. And Thomas John said she'd be wearing Chanel. And it would be a better dress than what she wore at the Golden Globes. So better, I guess it's your own opinion of what better is. And I don't see Critics' Choice. Oh, here's the Golden Globes. Well, this butterfly thing she's wearing is Chanel. Okay. Miss Knightley models for Chanel and so unsurprisingly chooses that label often. Ah, I wonder if that's why Thomas John said she'd probably wear Chanel. Because it says here she wears it often. As at the Golden Globes for which she wore this ruffle necked insect printed gown with a butterfly adorned clutch purse. Okay. Armchair critics pounced, especially after she told an interviewer it had taken 30 people in a week to construct the ensemble. In other words, it was not popular when she wore it to the Golden Globes. So, wow. Um, pretty, pretty likely you'll find something better. Okay, here's, here's the past. It says she just had a, all right, just had a baby. Oh, wow. So this is what she wore in my eye. That is beautiful. I don't know what that says, but that is beautiful. But that is also Valentino. That is not Chanel. So fail. You failed. You failed. You failed. Okay. Going back. Let's look at Emma Stone. What do you think she wore in 2015? Emma Stone. Oh, woo. Wow. That is gorgeous. Um, a floor length gown, properly glitterly. And it says, but it isn't very, every young actress who could carry off acid green. So this apparently is acid green, folks. Acid green. Oh, with those beautiful blue eyes. Wow. Amazing what she picked. Okay. So she's wearing acid green. This is for, she shot to the top of the best dress list after the Golden Globe Awards when she did the unthinkable. She wore pants. 
She took the more traditional route for Oscar night. So this is her Oscar night outfit. And Thomas John said she would have a light blue gown. Okay. Nope. Wrong. Eh. Okay. Let's go back to see who else. Thomas John is Lupita. I have no idea. Oh, there she is. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. Those pearls. Wow. That's gorgeous. Okay, when she was nominated for Academy Award last year, she approached the red carpet circuit leading up to the big event with what my colleague called military precision. The campaign was, okay, she got an Oscar. All right, this year, she didn't have the pressure of a nomination, but she didn't slack in the dress department. Her gown, a custom design by Francisco Costa of Calvin Klein. Okay, he said she would be in the, she was one of the best dress presenters. Uh, natural pearl some six thousand, according to published reports i must have waited 10 but now she's a veteran warrior of the red carpet wards proof that she's no slouch okay that's that's beautiful uh best dressed i don't know some of these others i'm sure are very nice um uh, that's oh that's that's pretty that's julianne moore and that's interesting and I guess best dressed, you know, there are critics who actually, oh, that's gorgeous, who actually say what is the best dressed according to each critic. But I have some awful nice outfits there. Yeah, look at that. So I don't know if she's best dressed or if she's the best dressed of the presenters. Okay, let's go back one more time. And let's look at some of these other predictions he made. Because so far, he failed eh, all off. Unless you want to say she was the best dressed of the presenters. Right. So we don't know. All right. Okay, so let me go over to the screen. Now that I have it all centered. Okay, so we said she would have the best dress of the female presenters at night. Who will be the best dressed person on the red carpet? He says, Julianne Moore. I think we already looked at that. And he says she's probably going to wear something by Tom Ford. Okay, I can see Julianne getting rave reviews and it generally being agreed that she was this year's best dressed okay generally agreed and the worst dressed okay let's see let's see here milton marion c-o-t-i-l-l-a-r-d in a black du jour dress black du jour dress I have no idea who these people are, you guys. And you're probably screaming at me like, come on, Susan, she was in such and such. <laughs> okay, it might be a little weird, so people won't really like it. It'll be a nice dress, just kind of screwy looking and might not actually fit her that well. She'll be one of the style faux pas of the night. And I can also see Rosamund Pike wearing, showing a lot of skin. No idea who that is either. Uh, she's going to show a lot of skin. Well, these people are quite attractive. And I think, isn't that kind of the idea? I think a lot of these actresses show a lot of skin. I don't know. What do you consider a lot of skin? Right? So this is going to be, Marion Coulter is going to be worst. Dressed. And... People don't like it. It's going to have some kind of, it's going to be screwy looking. I wonder what, what screwy looking looks like to R-E-W-Y. And not fit her very well. All right. Any idea? I'm curious myself. Let's go back. And... Guys like this is a little different, huh? A little different. A little Oscar, a little glamour here on Psychics Explained. You know, so we could, we could, we can glam up here. 
<laughs> I will never wear anything at one of these because I will never be invited. Oops. Julian Moore. Okay, this is going to be the person who's wearing Tom Ford. What did he say about Julianne Moore? What did he say about her again? Okay. Uh, she did edgy yesterday. Um, okay. She wore something, a mini dress that appeared to be constructed of shiny candy wrappers. She has an open mind and likes to take risk, her stylist said. She set risk aside at the Oscars, her turn to take the trophy after five nominations. Her floral embroidered Chanel gown was the picture of uncontroversial award season elegance. Carl Langerfield made this for me. She said on the red carpet, an offer like that is hard to refuse. Oh, he said she'd be wearing Tom Ford. So no, no, Thomas. No, you, you got that wrong too. Okay, so no for her. All right, so let's go to the Marion Coltard black de jour dress. It's going to be the worst dress. Oh, okay, let's see. I can't wait. Let's see how. Oh, there's Marion Coltard. Okay, you can set your watch by her red carpet choices, provided it's a Dior watch. Okay. Oh, he did say she would have a um, Dior. Uh, oh, oh, darn. A longtime ambassador for the label. Is with few exceptions brand faithful, but the Dior designer Ralph Simons carooms over so wide a spectrum in his Dior designs that it's still possible to be surprised. This evening... Uh, she selected a white um, gown, picking up on a mini mini trend of the evening. White dresses for black tie. It looked as good from the back where it gathered with a dark band as it did from the front. Let's take a look at this outfit that Thomas John said. It would be a black du jour dress. It is du jour, but it is not black and it is not... Um, it is, it is, uh, probably not the worst. I mean, and it wouldn't fit her well. It was screwy and it didn't fit well. He said, let's go back to that really quick. Okay. So he says it's going to be screwy. It's not going to fit well. And it's going to be black. So. I guess it fits fine. It just goes in the back and has this little thing around here. And so I assume it fits well. It looks okay here in the shoulders and from where we can see it. It's not black and it's not the worst dress. I mean, it is different. Okay. I don't know. I guess it's for some people, it might be kind of iffy matter of opinion well this is fashion i guess we're supposed to challenge these things okay so here we have the next person we got to look up as roseman oops i must be selling i must be selling wrong. rose pike there she is all right so he says about roseman pike that she's going to show a lot of skin I don't know. Is that a lot of skin? She's got a slit here and she's got bare shoulders and a bare back. I don't call that a lot of skin. I mean, that is more skin than I would be comfortable wearing, but then I'm not a fashion model. So, <laughs> okay. It's a matter of opinion, but I don't think that's a lot compared to what other people there are wearing too. So let's go back over here. He's predict. He made a winning winning choice. He's predicting the winner for best speech of the night. Okay, so again, this is a matter of opinion. What is the best speech of the night? Patricia Arlette is going to win for Boyhood and give a very heartwarming speech. 
She's going to be crying throughout, though, and her speech might even get cut short. Also, I see her bringing along quite a weird date, somebody unexpected. So I'm not going to show you this video because it is, um, I don't want to be have problems with the Oscars, uh, <laughs> but I'm going to give you the link to this. And let's just look at the picture of this. Yeah, I don't want to have any issues with the Oscars um, saying, uh, take, trying to take down my video or something like that. But here it is. So um, actress in Best Supporting Role, she did win. Uh, there's five people who were up for the nomination. She did win. And she is reading her little speech. And you're going to be able to see when you look at the video... This is the couple she came with, so I don't know who they are and if they're odd, but it looks like it's her husband and her son. She did thank people. She thanked um, her family and, oops, stop it with her eyes. Okay, she is not crying throughout. She does this, the typical stuff. She says, you know, thank you to this person. Thank you to that person and and so on. Here's her family again. And the guy with the hair in the back is the guy who gave her her, her thing. She's not crying still. And what she does at the very end is she says um, that uh, women should be given equal pay for equal rights. And Meryl Streep's like, yeah, man. So it was, a, it was political. And they all applaud. Good job. But her speech is not cut short. She does not start crying. And I don't know if it was the best speech of the whole night. I will give you a link. You can look at it yourself. So going back to what he says. I don't know if he knew she would win because he's psychic or he knew because his aunt, his odds were like one in five or because he really she did a fabulous job in boyhood. So what do you think? One in five? Could you pick it? She's going to be crying throughout. And her speech might even get cut short. It's going to be very heartwarming speech. Well, I don't know. Has she? What are her speeches look like in the past? And what is a typical Oscar speech? I don't know. Aren't they all heartwarming? Usually or funny or something. Okay, so that's wrong. She wasn't crying throughout. And it didn't get cut short. All right, here it is. Biggest faux pas of the night. I see a famous male presenter with dark hair up on stage and tripping because he's intoxicated. Also, a famous female presenter is going to have a wardrobe malfunction. Okay, I, I'm going to have to leave it up to you guys to figure that out. Was there a famous male presenter with dark hair tripping because he's intoxicated? Can somebody find that for me? Also, a famous female presenter is going to have a wardrobe malfunction can somebody figure that out i didn't watch i don't know and if it had happened and somebody on stage trips and was drunk then possibly they wouldn't uh would want to show that you know in clips after the fact you have to watch it live let me pause this really quick and let me just do a quick google to see if if there's anything and okay i let me just let me just like somebody tripped in 2013 apparently thomas john said he predicted that i don't know let me look okay so i found this website it's the independent.co.uk and i figured since they're independent let's let's see what they have to say so here's the oscars everything you need to know about what happened at the 87th academy awards the Oscars. Okay. So Neil Patrick Harris's jokes fall flat. People protested about pretty much everything. And here are the main events from the last night. So who had the most political Oscars ceremony for, okay. It was the most political Oscar ceremony forever. And Patricia Ariette, she said something political, Julianne Moore, Reese Witherspoon to a red carpet campaign to take women more seriously. Okay, there was calls for women's rights, African-American civil rights, immigration rights, gay rights. And so these speeches were common. All right, so what else? Um, equal pay and civil rights. 
and was it boring? No. Okay. Pretty average. Everything went according to the script. There was a few surprises. And that's with people who got their. Oh, Patricia Arrett. Where is it here? Patricia, whatever. Patricia in Boyhood and J.K. Simmons in Whiplash were long destined to win Best Supporting Actress and Actor, respectively. Okay, so Thomas John said she was going to win Best Supporting Actress, and she did. But according to this article from The Independent, it was long destined. She was, everybody believed she was going to win. Um, they were talking about the awards, lack of diversity, American, okay. Who cares who wore who? All right, so... Um, Okay, I don't know. So I'll, I'll let you read this. I don't see anything there. But it looks like they're going into a lot of depth, right? About the article. Okay, let's let's look up um, Trip. Okay, Trip. Oh, it's on this ad here. Okay, so maybe somebody fell. Oh, fell is used four times in this article. Oh, for fellow. Fellow fell flat. Okay, so fell. So Thomas John said somebody was going to trip, trip, fall. Can we think of another act? trip, fall, um, uh, drunk? Because he said somebody be drunk. What did he say? How do you use the word he used? Intoxicated, didn't he? I N T O X I C. Here it is. Nobody's intoxicated. What is this woman doing here? She's putting something on her hand. Okay, so nothing in this article comes up with somebody tripping or being intoxicated or drunk or falling over. Um Wardrobe malfunction, R-D-R-O-B-E. Okay, wardrobe, W-A-R-D-R-O-B-E. Nope, wardrobe doesn't come up in here, a malfunction. Malfunction of any kind of spelling. Nope, malfunction doesn't come up. So the term wardrobe malfunction was made famous, that term, because of Janet Jackson in that Super Bowl where she had a wardrobe malfunction where she pulled something or or Justin Tenderlake pulled something in and part of her breast showed for like a quarter of a second or something like that. So that's why it's been fa made famous. Okay. I there's not nothing. Um looks pretty benign. A lot of a lot of um what's the word for it? A lot of uh political speeches. And see if I see anything else here really quick besides Wikipedia. Um, no, I'm not seeing any, but let's see wardrobe malfunction or just put malfunction. Okay. Aha. There is something. There is something. Here is what it was. And they put a picture of it. Oh my gosh. Emma Stone has an Oscars wardrobe malfunction accidentally flashing her crotch on the red carpet. Ta-da! There is a wardrobe malfunction there. Okay, that is, that's, that's not polite. Okay, that's nasty. Somebody's taking pictures of her. So he says a famous fa female presenter is going to have a wardrobe malfunction. Well, I guess out of the billions of pictures that are taken of these people that night, somebody's going to have one. So was she a presenter? Who was that? Emma Stone? Yeah, Emma Stone. 
was she a presenter that night? Did it, it didn't happen on this thing. It happened afterwards. Okay. So how do we know who the presenters are? Oscars 2015. Presenter. Okay. So let's see. Let's screen share and you can see at the same time I'm seeing. Here are the Oscars. All right. Is that them? Is that? Oh, maybe there's a different. Okay, so let me let me look for Emma. Nope, Emma's not on here. Stone. Nope. So these are the presenters. And her name is nowhere when we try to do a find for this. I guess I could put the link in, in the description too and see if there if she was a presenter. No, oh, that's the end of it. And their name's not there. So let's look at that prediction really quick again. Here's what he says. Also, a famous female presenter is going to have a wardrobe malfunction. So I guess not. Not so good, huh? He he got the right act uh, actress winning something that was a chance of one in five, and it was predicted that she would win anyway. He has predicted so and so somebody was going to wear du jour, but it turns out it's somebody who normally wears du jour she there she's a spokesperson for them that's her her brand so of course she's going to wear it another one he predicted she would wear chanel but she didn't and according to the article we read it said that she normally wears chanel and so probably that's where he got it we don't know if that person's best dressed perform um best dressed presenter Oh, let's look and see if she was a presenter. Since I have this up, let's look real quick. Share screen. I mean, does he mean presenter or does he mean person who shows up or? Okay, so in here we will put down L-U-P-I-T-A. She's the one that wore the pearls. All right, so she was a presenter. Da -da. Last year's winning and leading actress, supporting actor. Okay, yeah, so she was the presenter. Was she the best dressed of the presenters? Kate Blanchett. Um, I don't know, what did, Kate, what did Kate Blanchett wear? Did she look good? Let's see. Oh, I got to share the screen so you guys can see it too. I'm finding out at the same moment you are. Kate Blanche. B-L-A-N-C-H-E-T-T. -T. There she is. I mean, that looks really nice. Very, very, very pretty. Um, this is John Gallolino. Um, she wore a silk velvet gown designed according to the label, especially for her. I mean, that's pretty. I think the pearl thing, the other woman's is more more attractive because it had the pearls and stuff, and that must have been really heavy. So in my opinion, the pearl one, I think, is right. It is It is prettier than the Kate Blanchett one, but I don't really know. I mean, that looks pretty attractive, too. I don't know. A lot of this is a matter of opinion. All I know is he really didn't get anything right. He got, he's, I mean, only if you really stretch, okay? <laughs> and a lot of it was already predicted. So I will leave all these links in the description of the article. Please leave me comments. I find this interesting. Do you like this? That was, I thought it was kind of fun. It was a little different than a reading or something like that, but we're looking at a prediction he made in 2015. I don't think his odds were all that great, but you know, he didn't do so good.
I, his odds were fine. He didn't do so well. And the things he did say were pretty typical things of what people would do. But he sure does know his designers. Wow, I'm impressed, TJ.